Yeah, we've been recording. Hi, uh, greetings everybody. This is Wesley Pepper, the Art Let's Your Podcast. Um, this is episode 163. And if you're new to this channel um, and you haven't already, you know, smash that like and subscribe or the subscribe button. I will appreciate it. Um, yeah, and to my new and to the returning listeners, much love to everybody, man. Um, as I say every week, I appreciate every single one of you. Um, so, yeah, um, today, um, today we're talking about a really cool event. Um, Called Sounding Pictures, the live live scores to short films. Um, my my first take of it is almost like freestyling, but with film um, and music, which is I guess just from from being an artist is something I really I think is really exciting. I actually haven't heard of something like this before, um, and so and 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 I think it just opens up the possibility of storytelling and of sort of reimagining what the artist or what, what, what the filmmaker tried to do and what the audience is trying uh, uh. and i think that this age of streaming and watching like you know having all these uh, uh, uh series and movies and stuff to, to choose this thing seems way more interactive than anything i've i've heard of so uh, uh without further ado uh, we're talking to noah khan first and foremost so uh, Noah, first and foremost, my brother, um, good morning and welcome. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, um, I should also say while I'm here, there's uh, there's some pipes banging around in the background. So if it becomes too much, uh, too much distraction, just let me know and I'll change locations. But we're in the process uh, at the moment of setting up the whole sounding pictures um, set design, which is done by... Uh, a sonographer in Tabi yeah, Malaka, uh, but yes, I'm I'm yes. great. <laughs> okay, yeah, thanks. Uh, uh, let's uh, let's 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 start there. When you say you guys are setting up exactly what um what uh, just just explain to us firstly, but before we get to the stage, just what the idea is about, and then we'll get to like how the setting up and how and, you know how the crowds uh is gonna work and how the whole op- um and how the whole festival is gonna operate. Of course. So the um the name of the, the it's called collations two and mm. by collations we just mean bringing things together uh, and that is curated compiled and organized directed by the impresario of the less good idea here at the center for the less good idea named neo muyanga um so it's collations two sounding pictures and the idea is that we are as you said freestyling with um picture and sound and we're used to seeing films with those two things being together. Yeah. Uh, but the origin of film itself is, is, is silent film. We didn't have uh, uh, sound recording um, during those early days of, of filmmaking. And, and so you would have an orchestra live playing to each silent film that, that, that one went to. Even that wasn't pre-recorded. So the soundtrack would change each time one witnessed the film. And so we were interested, and Neo was interested in um, pushing that further and bringing in musicians and bringing in filmmakers. And the filmmakers have made silent films or are making silent films. And the musicians are exploring, interacting, reacting with those films pretty much for the first time in front of an audience. So it's sort oh, of a... Like, some. So the musicians haven't seen the film. Yeah. Yet? Interesting. With some of the, yeah, some of the pieces, there's some aspects that are being pre-composed, but for the majority of the, the program, it's, yeah, it's fresh. It's freestyling, as you say. Oh, yeah, just brilliant, brilliant. Um, so that, man, uh, yeah. a bunch. Firstly, um, with, silent, with silent films, <laughs> Uh, to the newer generation, just explain to us what, what, what a silent film is, because I don't think I've actually watched a silent film, to be honest. Mm, that's a great point, actually. It's something we take for granted. Um, a silent film was how moving pictures or cinema, as we know it, began. And that would have been in the early 1900s up until around the 1920s even late 1800s. And a silent film is as it sounds. There is no, there's no sound. Um, so when I'm speaking now, you can hear what my lips are saying. 
but a silent film would have a sort of acting style that was a bit more theatrical and um, oftentimes the scene would play out, you know, oh, um, I, I've got a flower for my lover. And then that text would appear written on the film. I have a flower for my lover. And then the scene would go back and continue to play out with real people. Um, but you're not hearing dialogue. And so in the early days of silent film, you would have um, an orchestra creating a live soundtrack to that silent film, just so it's not totally silent in the, in the audience. You know, there is some mood and genre that's being, that is, that, that's accentuating it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's actually a bunch of things to unpack there. It also, uh, I guess, takes the skill of the actor to another level because they have to convey through their body language and so forth much more than they'll just do, you know, when they can just talk. Um, I think it'll really push, and 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 then the skills of the director as well. I mean, the sets, uh, costumes, and so forth. Um, but like you know, in the beginning, you were saying you guys are still setting up. So just explain to us what the actual setup is like, and um, how 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 will everything work? So how does the crowd come in? Where do you show the film, and how does the uh, uh, audience sort of interact with them? Um, everything, and where does the musicians? Yeah, basically everything. Yeah. Yes. So. We have two setups, um, and I'll, I'll tell you about the first one, which is kind of your traditional theater setup, but uh, the Center for the Less Good Idea is not a traditional theater. It's, yeah. it's, it's just a, a room with white walls, gray walls, black walls. We, we paint the walls whatever, uh, whatever color we want. Mm -hmm. but, um, I believe in Tabi Singh, uh, our scenographer is painting them black and create this immersive feeling of sort of like a cinema. And you will basically walk into the center cinema. You'll have a seat as an audience member and you will see in front of you musicians and you will see a projected screen. Okay. And you as an audience member will watch both of those things take place simultaneously. So you'll, 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 um, you'll be able to watch something we found really interesting actually in workshopping this idea was watching the musicians watch the film because uh. we too are interested, right? We're interested in seeing how they sonically react yeah. and they're doing that live. So, so watching a, a, a human, you know, I guess in the old days yeah. of silent film, they would hide, hide those musicians in the, yeah. in the orchestra pit. Um, but we're wanting to kind of bring that improvisation process and, and story making process that's happening live. You know, those mus musicians are trying to make sense of the film while at the same time trying to listen to each other as musicians and then trying to create some sort of story with the music as well. And we've also, you know, we're also interested to see what happens when, when, when we play something that, that, that doesn't seem like it should go with this film and what happens when you switch musicians and when you switch. So we have all of, uh, handful of fantastic musicians with various different backgrounds from classical, jazz. Yeah. Um, ele uh, electronic synthesizers, um, percussion. It's, it's, we, so we kind of have a, a different selection of all these. It's not your classical orchestra, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Can yeah. you hear me okay? Um, um, yeah, I can also hear uh, some drumming there, but it's okay. It's not, okay. it's not overwhelming or anything. Um, yeah, I okay. see, I see Stompy Salib is also there. He's just an old friend of mine. Yes, Stompy. Um, yeah. he, does, he does a lot of uh, 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 almost un unconventional type of uh, uh, music. I remember once he had a thing, we had a bucket of water and he was actually blowing uh, into the box that bubble sound. I thought that was really, that thing always stuck with me. Um, just, 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 yeah. just, just exactly. Um, so he's a bunch of musicians. Do they all work together? like an orchestra or as an individual, just explain to us that process. Of course. So different 
directors are working with different, we have a, a selection of different films and, and those films are made by different filmmakers. And each filmmaker um, is going to be working with different selections of that kind of ensemble of, of, of musicians. Okay. Um, yeah, so not everyone's involved in each film and certain filmmakers have during that workshop process, they said, oh, I, I really like um, uh, this musician and the way that they're kind of responding to the film. So, yeah. so they have continued conversations past and through from the workshops until the end of this month. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, um, yeah. Let's go back to the film. So, so is there a central theme that all the, 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 the films are, are being made? Um, um, if so, what's that about? And um, how many films? And tell me just the actual format of the of the of the of the um, of the festival. So, so how long are the films? How long, you know, how does it? How long do they play? And um, and there's another question hmm. I want to ask regarding that. But you know, let's just let's just start with this one first. The only the only theme that unites all the films is that they're all silent. There's oh. no, uh, yeah, there's no sound. <laughs> Um, apart from that, the films are, are extremely varying. Um, a lot of them are working with archival footage. Um, and that's, we've done some explorations with, so like my film, for example, is my own archive. Um, but other filmmakers, Naomi Vanneke, for example, is, is, is creating new animations. Oh, I would say that the, the archival footage as a uniting theme is part of it, but once you shoot something, it's then, it's archived. Yeah. So I guess it's to say that nothing was, um, I would say nothing was made fresh for this, but we are still making fresh the films oh, as well. Like the, we're live the editing the films. Yeah. 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 Uh, how, long, how long is each film? I think each film's around 12 to 15 minutes. And the films themselves could also repeat. So we, we could watch them uh, different times with different musicians. Um, so we definitely wanted to go more towards short form um, so that it's more easily freestyleable so that you can change things and the audience can witness that change. Um, it's a little bit more, yeah, manip manipulatable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, just a, just a, just an interesting point on the shorter format. Um, that pertains actually to the to the, my podcast. Um, the shorter format uh, um, is, uh, I, in terms of views and, and stuff, like it's much more profitable. Um, and there's also most of the platforms, uh, streaming platform and so forth, is is actually. I think it's designed better for shorting for for shorter format. Um, um, I, mm. I've also found there's more content on shorter than a longer format, and uh, 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 there's also more interaction. Ironically, at least from from my uh, uh, experience, whether with a shorter format, that that's also why with the Outlets of podcast, I also you know after I publish the the, the the full interview, I also chop it up into multiple. We'll um, chop and do little social media mm. teaser kind of yeah, things, yeah. yeah so that's also, uh, uh, as I say, it's very, it's, it, it's successful. And I mean, there's also the, the old TikTok generation, which is old generation brought up on that. So, 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 so tell me, yeah. is that, is, was, was that, was that part of the conceptual, um, when you guys were conceptualizing the whole thing, were you, were you thinking about new media and so forth? Um, not that new media, but you understand what I'm, what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 definitely. Great question. Um, I think with this program specifically, Yes, attention span is part of it. As is an audience coming in to see, so you'll, you'll come in for maybe an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. um, changing the narrative and changing the style of each, uh, of having several different films in that hour and a half, we thought would be more interesting for an audience to experience, as well as, um, Oh, I forgot to tell you about the second, uh, the second 
aspect of the films and I will do that in a moment because I told you about the first which is the kind of traditional cinema layout um, and then I think in general the center works in short form with all of its programs because it aids to the beginnings of an idea and and the kind of um, flexibility of an idea if you've if you've developed a long um, sort of turgid structured piece the and and there's a there's a space for that you know a traditional theater can be a space for that but the center prides itself on that just the step before that which is the the, the making process and the process and allowing that to be um flexible and the shorter the form the more flexible it is the more the idea can change drastically at the last minute because oftentimes that's what happens with ideas as you go you wake up the next yeah. or the thing and you're like actually no this is yeah. we have to change it all and ideally the center lends itself to that it lends itself to the artist and it lends itself to the idea because that is that is the driving creative yeah. force behind everything that we all make you know is that idea and the passion behind that idea so some changes and as your life changes you want the idea that you're making to to follow that yeah um, yeah it's interesting oh sorry control. and then i no go ahead please um it's interesting how you i explained to you it's almost like the creative process inside your mind uh, uh, you know, it's always so layered and it always drops and changes all the time and you always go back and forward and so forth and so forth. It's like you conceptualize yes. that entire thing into one event, which is, which I think, uh, you know, I think five, ten years ago, I don't think something like that would have necessarily, well, maybe not have worked, but I'd at least be that popular. It's just, it's, 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 for me, it's just fascinating how um, how post uh, covid uh, 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 art art events are, are sort of adapting to how people uh, uh, to people's behavior, to how people are thinking, and so forth. It's just it's just a fascinating process. It's just it's incredibly fascinating. Um, another question on the on the actual film. So 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 once the musicians have performed to the uh, to to the film, what happen? Is there sort of a final product? So, so does the does the fellow make it eventually say, okay, fine, I want to work with this musician? Does that music eventually become part of the product? If so, on what platform is it available, and and how can somebody who hasn't been to the event, uh, uh, you know, watch these um, films? Wonderful question. Um, the center prides itself on filming everything and recording everything uh, with really professional sound equipment and film equipment and that goes from the beginning of the idea until it's performed in front of an audience and so these films will be we will film we'll film the films well when the audience comes we'll film the film the uh, musicians and then Zane Valley our sound mixer will take that sound, mix it beautifully, and then we'll attach it to the film um, and put it on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. Oh, hello. <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> it'll, it'll go on our YouTube channel and our, on our website. Um, everything we've ever made is on our website, lessgoodidea.com. And uh, Ideally, you know, the, the, the filmmakers can then sort of, if, if the chemistry was good with, with the musicians, they can say, okay, I want to use this particular recording for the film, or, hey, let's, this is a great beginning of an idea, let's further this and make a whole uh, feature-length film sound like this. Um, the whole sort of point of the center is to, well, one of the points is to, to, to bring those many different interdisciplinary artists together. I get that. Get them start working together and then see what works. And if it works, then you can take it somewhere else and it can grow and it can gestate. Josh, sure. you know, there's actually, yeah. there's actually a bunch of stuff I'd like to expand um, on that. I think one of the points, I won't expand and I'll do it on a future episode, 
but um, it's I really get to get a sense of I've I've, I've noticed um, because I talk to artists every week and I'm an artist myself um, um, is that a lot of artists first look what the market is sort of wants and needs and they sort of adapt to that. This is the opposite. This is the complete opposite. This is reimagining everything. You first doing the art, and in uh, South Africa, where um, uh, you know things are a bit complicated in terms of art, people will much prefer to listen to something more dance, uh, 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 musically, and so forth and so forth. But yeah, yeah, this 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 is making the art first, and then I think that's fascinating. That's fascinating. and brave and brave. Um, um, in, 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 in many ways, because you don't even know what the end product might actually look like. Look like. And what I also find fascinating is that you are following the audience looking at the work. That's fascinating. Uh, um, and I think that's just another layer completely. Um, just two more questions, my brother, before we get to the specs of the actual event. Um, the Center for Less Good Idea um, in, in Mabaneng. Um, just tell us a little bit about how the center operates. Um, you guys said that you use, um, that it sort of encourages um, collaboration between multiple uh, different types of artists. So just explain to us just so so people who, um, yeah, so they just understand um, what to expect. Of course, we, uh, we have three programs, three kind of main programs. Our main program currently, which the college which he belongs to, we just call at the center it's sort of our year. We used to do seasons. We were up to season. 10. We've kind of this year changed the approach a little bit and just done collations, but that's sort of our, our bread, butter and meat is the at the center. Well, I say that, but that's, that's not true. It's yeah. Not bread, butter. It's, it's one of the three. Um, and so that is where we invite multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary artists and people, whether it's architects, dancers, filmmakers, uh, boxing club, um, VR artists, and just pile them together in the same room. And each season or each um, sort of program has a different um, provocation. So if Season seven, it was text. With season nine, it was translation. And these are just sort of these starting points by which all the artists can 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 explode. Uh, the second sort of bread and butter and meat is our academy, our So Academy, run by Athena Mazarakis, and that has many different um, legs and arms. And that basically embraces the, in the creative process, I'm sure you've worked with, you're a collaborator as, as, as an artist, right? One is naturally loves to collaborate. And we noticed at the center that in those collaborations, you, there is a natural learning that takes place. One person has a certain set of knowledge that another might and vice versa. And so, as the center, we wanted to kind of lean into that. And uh, it's called So Academy because anytime you start to explain something to someone, so um, in order to do this, so in order to do that. Yeah. And yeah, so I that's the, the simple, and that has many different programs. Like I said, um, we do How Showing the Making, which invites different artists and an audience to, to open up how they make. And it can be in any, um, it can be visual art, it can be movement, it can be all, all of the different shades. Um, and then our third branch, our third bread and butter and meat is the center outside the center. And what, uh, that's run by Bronwyn Lace, our director and co-founder. And because she's not based here in South Africa, she has sort of pioneered taking uh, starting relationships with arts organizations worldwide and so the work that's made here at the center is then able to find legs across yeah. the globe yeah um, yeah yeah that's very important yeah which is very important right in order to kind of get international attention yeah. get funding yeah. um, Money. and yeah. to allow the artists to grow their their practice yeah, yeah um, fantastic fantastic yeah. it's um yeah 
again, like very experimental and it sounds very, it fits almost into this post COVID narrative per uh, perfectly. Um, and it, as I said, it, it's bold, man. Shit, man. It, it's, 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 yeah. <laughs> and like I said, uh, uh, there's a bunch of things I can, I can, I can unpack there, but like, I try to keep these episodes direct. I try not to be ended too far off the point. Yeah, um, we, can, we can chat for hours about that creative process, I'm sure. And I'm fascinated behind, behind the creative process, man, because I try to I document can tell. Yeah. Uh, I think I think it's fascinating how how um, how artists identify a market, uh, uh, apply their pros, uh, 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 technique, uh, 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 and, and, and then on top of all that, they usually have a voice, you know, whether it be social, political, or whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, I mean, I mean, I just, um, I, I had a, I had a, uh, um, a previous, a, a, a previous episode where uh, it's more of like a free market type. It's a very, very traditional uh, type of type, type, type of setup where people come in, they look at these stalls and they buy stuff and they go home. And um, um, they're not really interested in moving away from that because I know that in, in the art industry, there's there's a lot of comfort in, I wouldn't say monotonous, but doing the same thing because you know you're going to get paid if you do this, 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 and that. Then you know the income is going to come in. This thing here is just completely turned it on, on its head. And I think that's fascinating. Uh, uh, Noah, let's get into your film. What's your film about? And just a little bit about, uh, like you said, a lot of archive footage and stuff. So just explain to us a little bit about that. Sure thing. So mine was, I was in the process of writing a, a longer feature film. And in doing that, part of what was helping inspire me was going back through a lot of the footage that I had shot over the last um, eight years here in South Africa and moved here in 2016. Uh, and just sort of, sort of picking certain clips that I had shot. And then I thought, well, when Neil invited me to, to make a film, I thought, well, great, I have this sort of already baking idea and some films that are associated, uh, some clips that are associated with it. So let's take those clips and experiment with them and see. I'm kind of curious to see what's born out of that and if it's at all related to the original idea I was writing in the script um, and I'm open to whatever it does be become uh, and I think that's generally how the center works is like you come in with that good idea and then something else sort of catches on and that is the less good idea uh, it, it, it gains a, 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 moment, a momentum that you hadn't originally um, planned so uh, the clips in general are kind of involved in uh, the Johannesburg city and particularly the Johannesburg suburbs. And these sort of, I was very fascinated by these long um, tunnels of beautiful trees and walls and electric fences and this sort of labyrinth style thing of the suburbs. Like, uh, I find that I think I'm okay with directions, but there was something about moving here. These suburbs, I just I get lost in them, and so there was this sort of maze, uh, maze nature to the to the suburbs, and and that they're both visually very beautiful, but also very protected and very um, sort of fearful in a way. And I also started asking myself, okay, well then, if this is the labyrinth, then what is what is the minotaur and, and what does it look like? And what does it sound like? Is it the squeak of the harida? Is it the cracking of the electric fence? And so these are sort of some things we wanted to then translate musically with the musicians. And in the workshop period, we were, you know, playing with certain clips and saying, okay, let's see what, um, let, yeah, let's, let's, let's just use the sound of a harida and, and interpret that as musicians. So that's what I mean when I say, so the musicians have seen aspects of the film and have developed certain languages to to each filmmaker's film, but they haven't seen the the the, the film in its length. And with my film, film in particular, which we'll be doing in the second location, The Pepper's Ghost, which let's see, we have nine minutes. I'll do my best to explain very quickly. Um, the Pepper's Ghost is a even older than silent films, uh, I think 18th century theater technique where 
a piece of half silver glass would, would hang at an angle. If you're, watch, if you're in the audience, the glass is in front of you. And then in the orchestra pit, something could be illuminated and would reflect on the glass because it's half silvered. You can see through the glass. I know it's, it's, it's you have to come to see it to, for it to make yeah. sense. But basically it, 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 it gives the illusion of a ghost on stage. So it's live, uh, it's practical holograph. It's a practical holograph. Um, and so we're using that to project films onto, but also have the musicians be part of that film. Um, or have performers or dancers be, be it looks like you're, you're inside the mm -hmm. film. And so we love that, uh, yeah, we love that mechanism and we are exploring with it more. I think that my film might be in that space and we're kind of going to also experiment with live editing it and changing it as, as, editing as, as it well. goes and seeing. Oh. Mm. So, so, so pretty much. It's freestyle, capital yeah, F. Yeah, 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 you're taking the entire creative <laughs> process for you to come check it out. The sound artist's brain works or at least how part of it works and come check it out and be yes. and, and, and part of the experience. That is, that is great. Uh, my brother, I'm sort of in closing. You guys say this is the second uh, festival that you're running um, or the, 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 yeah, the, the second type of festival. Or... Second collation. <laughs> yeah. 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 My language. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you explain to oh, us. That's like, all good. We've got names. Uh, thing. Uh, it can be uh, hard so to keep track of. The, um, the times and dates and um, if people want to come check it out, how do they do that? Tickets and so forth. Cool. So we open on October 31st, Halloween, and it goes until November 2nd. So I think that's, ooh, let's see, yeah, it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, um, or Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You'll, you'll, you'll check me on it. Um, but yeah. basically, our tickets will be available on our site, lessgoodidea.com. If you follow us on Instagram, we're very, we're good with posting, we, but we don't overpost. Um, it's just at less good idea. And you'll see all the info for this show, all of our upcoming shows, you'll see all those kind of short, um, as we were talking about earlier, the, 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 the short condensed versions of, of things and, and, and teasers and trailers and highlights. And so it has a lot of that content. Um, and then also on our YouTube channel, you can see full performances of everything we've done, but in order to get tickets for this, so just get them through our site, lessgoodidea.com. I'm not entirely sure when tickets go live, but I think it's pretty soon. Uh, so, can you get and at the door? Can I? Can you get tickets at the door? You can generally, but I have a feeling these are going to sell out uh, because we can only have a limited amount of audience in the space, in the spaces. Yeah. So how many, how big is I would the... Just, What's the maximum uh, size of what did you you allow there, or you're looking to get? In the Pepper's Ghost Room, I think we do thirty. It's very small because it's it's a small room and there's that that hanging piece of glass. And you also need to be seated in a certain way in order to see the ghost. In the center room, it's a bit bigger. I'm not entirely sure. For for our normal performances, it's over a hundred, um, but. With this, the audience is going to have to be situated in a certain way to see the screen. Whereas with our normal performances, this um, yeah, we've got I get the three-dimensional, but this is kind of just one-directional. So it's going to be smaller. I would recommend getting them on online just yeah, to avoid yeah, 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 disappointment at the door. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And to my listeners, uh, 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 that actually makes uh, complete sense. And I also like the fact that you're curating your audience um, so you know exactly... Yeah, I think that's also just a, just an interesting that but uh, uh, perspective on that. That's also something I've noticed or I've been documenting post COVID is that artists are actually doing a bit more of that definitely than a, a, a pre that where you just want everybody to come to the room because you just need the money or you want a big audience. Now artists are actually very specific because because I'm 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 in that direction as well. Um, and I also find uh, besides the fact that the, the, the physical space. Uh, 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 but like there's also a certain audience where you can also put you don't have to always explain your work and you sort of know what you what you what you're getting at and that that audience interaction which is also what gold 
um uh, yeah so <laughs> it's um the festival is yeah it, it, as i said it's a brilliant concept man it, it's it's how the artist brain works uh fascinating fascinating stuff um my brother in closing is there any um uh i guess closing remarks that you have or um is there also uh, and can you drop any um besides the the the, the centers uh uh, uh, social medias. Is there any other? Uh, if people want to check out your work, is there any um, social media handles, websites, and so forth? Uh, for me, I'm pretty uh, tucked away from those things. So okay. I think if you'd like to come see my work, come come to the collations. Okay. Um, I, I like the. That being said, I have kind of leaned in a bit more to the how a film can exist on an Instagram or a TikTok, but I, um, most of my work is is um, either short films or or can be seen at, at this collations too, um, October 31st, November 2nd. So yeah, I, I, I am romantic. I like the kind of, I like the, the, the communal sit down, watch film aspect of, of filmmaking. Yes. So. Uh, Noah Khan, thanks yeah. again, my brother, for coming through. Uh, to the listeners, if you've enjoyed any of this content and you haven't, smash that subscribe button. Um, and yeah, remember to check it out. It's from the 31st of October to the 20th. <laughs> was it 20th? From a, 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 a Halloween. A, a Second of November. Little weekend. Yeah, yeah, it's that weekend. It's good fun, which is good fun, because I know people also go out a lot um, um, over that time. So yeah, we'll come, come see a film before you go out. You know, What better way to... Yeah. Yeah, get definitely. in the mood of the of Hallow's Eve. Yeah, definitely. It's also uh, the festive season is not too far away, so it's also nice to start mm. that. So this is fascinating, my brother. Thanks a lot, man. I will publish this episode. Thank you in so much. Weeks time. Um, I'll definitely eat you up as soon as I do, and I also, like I said, I'll chop it up. I usually do that a week after um, I publish. I publish it, but I'll but I'll let you know about all of the above. And um, yeah, once again, thanks for coming through, my brother. Thanks so and, much, and, Leslie. Your, yeah. Um, you um, you guys are starting to set up and everything, you know. Good luck with all of that. And I hope you know all the best for the for the event. Thank you, and sorry about again about the sound pollution, but it's it's been great to, uh, to chat with you. I can tell you know you you are a seasoned and immersed artist because you ask such beautiful questions and, thank and you, you thank really you care about that. the podcast and the listeners. So thank you. Yeah, yeah. thank you for that. And uh, yeah, yeah, much love, much love, my brother. Um, yeah, so much let's love. Have- I'm um, enjoying the day, my king, and I'll be in touch now. Beautiful. Thank you, my brother. Soon. Yes, bye-bye. Cheers, Wesley. All right. Cheers, bye-bye.